All right, welcome everybody. We're going to get started. Welcome to my session. Whoops! How not to accidentally delete everything. Uh, I think a lot of you saw the session uh, that Alexander and Katie just gave, which was a great explanation of a new feature uh, um, in the fine grain RBAC access controls for permissions, which allows you to restrict what kinds of resources can be deleted. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of other scenarios that can happen uh, and have happened. Um, so first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dan Garfield. I am the uh, what, what have I done? I, I, uh, I'm a co-founder of CodeFresh uh, and now VP uh, open source at Octopus Deploy. I am an Argo maintainer and have been for several years. Um, and uh, I helped create the open GitOps standard and helped launch ArgoCon, which I'm super thrilled. This is actually kind of cool for me because I actually live in Salt Lake. And so this is the first time that I didn't have to travel to like everybody came here. It's very strange to talk about this stuff in my own town because people in Salt Lake don't talk, where I live, they don't talk about this stuff. So anyway, uh, you can follow me on, on uh, Twitter at Today Was Awesome. I also want to give a shout out to Pasha who is an engineering lead at Octopus Deploy and an Argo maintainer, actually number two most active on Argo CD this year. Uh, he lives in Ukraine and unfortunately due to the war is not able to travel. Uh, this is most, this, a lot of this content is stuff that he prepared. So if you see any mistakes, be sure to let him know that he should have done a better job. Um, a little bit about CodeFresh, if you're not familiar with it, we have a control plane for Argo with environments and promotions management. It's incredibly powerful. Get a demo. It's out there at the booth. Uh, we offer enterprise support for Argo and technical account management. We'll help you scope your stuff out, architect it, upgrade plan all that stuff. We have a hardened security distribution for Argo, so you have really fast SLA on CVE patching, third-party library patching, all that kind of stuff. And of course, many of you already know that we have the number one GitOps certification and training. How many people have done the CodeFresh uh, GitOps training? Wow, that's the smallest number I've ever seen in a room. That's impressive. So uh, go get a free code or, or a discount from uh, the CodeFresh booth. All right, so here's example number one. Let's say you've got an application set. It's powered up a bunch of applications. Everything's good. Everything's fine. You feel good. And suddenly you wake up and you're on fire. And all the applications have been deleted. What happened? How did that happen? Nobody even made a change. No one touched the darn thing. OK, we're going to come back to that one. Uh, number two, let's say you're upgrading Argo CD, something gets stuck, you go to delete some resources. You, you know, when, you're, when you're stuck upgrading something, you're like, I'll delete that thing, Argo CD will put it back. So you delete some stuff in Argo CD and then suddenly, poof, everything's gone. Not only is Argo gone, all of your applications are gone. What the heck just happened? All of my resources just got deleted. This really happened. I actually know somebody that this happened to and I invited him to come and give this talk with me and he, he said no. He did not want to revisit that episode. Uh, so let's talk a little about how deletion works in Argo CD. So first of all, in the Argo CD architecture, um, you've got Argo CD repo server that's responsible for checking code out of Git and then generating those manifests. And then you've got the Argo CD application controller which is responsible for, for actually applying those changes into Kubernetes. Now, the application set controller, and we're going to be talking about both applications and application sets and sometimes the differences in the, in the behavior between those two, so hopefully we don't get too lost. But the Argo CD application set, the application set infrastructure is basically bolted on to Argo CD and all it does is the application custom resource, the application set custom resource um, generates application custom resources and it doesn't even have to talk to Argo CD to do that. It just generates those resources on the cluster and Argo CD picks up those resources. Uh, it doesn't, Argo CD doesn't really care how those are created. If it was created by an application set, if it was created by you manually as a user, it's just looking for that custom resource and then we'll go and manage them. And you'll notice that the application custom resources are controlled by owner references. We'll talk about that in a second because it's different than a finalizer and it's going to cause different behavior. Now finalizers in Argo CD, uh, when you create an application you have the option to create a finalizers on your resources. 
And the default, the default configuration for this is that it will do a foreground cascading deletion of resources. So if you delete an application and the finalizers are set on resources, which is one of your, your sync options that you can set up, um, it will then, after, when you mark the application for deletion, it will then automatically mark all the child resources for deletion, delete all the child resources, and then delete the application, and uh, it'll follow that process, and we'll talk about that. There's a difference between that and an owner reference. So in Kubernetes in general, when you create a deployment uh, and it spins up pods, those pods have an owner reference to the deployment. And so if you delete that deployment, the object that the owner reference points to, Kubernetes will automatically delete all objects that are pointed at that reference. So why don't we do that for Argo CD applications? Why don't we just have all the resources be owner referenced to the application? Well, the owner reference needs to reference something that's on the same cluster, okay? And Argo CD applications can be deployed, their resources could be deployed to other clusters. They could be all kinds of different places. And we actually want to introduce some logic for how those finalizers are handled that an owner reference wouldn't give us. So let's look at the generic way that Kubernetes works. This is just Kubernetes. We're not even talking about Argo CD yet. Um, you've got a user who deletes a resource. The Kubernetes API actually sends some kind of watch event to some kind of controller. This is the owner of the finalizer. So this could be like if you're using uh, Longhorn, you, it has a, a finalizer for uh, storage volumes, for example. Um, if you're using Argo CD, it's gonna be Argo CD. The controller is going to execute some kind of logic, and when it's done removing what it, whatever it needs to delete and do, it will then remove that finalizer, and once that finalizer is removed, Kubernetes will actually delete that resource and inform the user. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Now, when we introduce uh, Argo CD, and let's, let's start with looking at application sets. If a user deletes an application set, this informs the Kubernetes API just like before, but because applications under an application set are by owner reference, the owner of that reference is now deleted, so all of those applications that were created by that application set are now automatically marked for deletion. And this creates a deletion timestamp on all of those resources, all of those applications. Uh, this notifies the controller, in this case it's the Argo CD controller, which verifies the timestamp, uh, and then it goes through and does operations. And one of those operations is if uh, if finalizers are set, which by default with application sets they are, then it will mark all of those resources for deletion, at which point it'll push back and all of those components, uh, the, the finalizers will, will be removed, allowing the, the deletion of all those resources to continue um, because that timestamp was added to all those resources. So, first, uh, on manual deletion. If you're deleting things from the UI and the CLI, it is the same as deleting them in Git. So if you're using like an a app of apps or something like that, or you're deleting resources and you have prune enabled, except that in Git you cannot override the finalizer. So when you're deleting in the UI, you can actually uh, override the finalizer that's listed on resources and decide if you want to keep resources or not. Uh, whereas in Git, you need to actually have a, um, you would need to have like prune turned off or something like that in order to do that. Um, so app deletion from app of apps in Git requires both finalizers and the prune option. So if the finalizers are set uh, in your app of apps, in order to delete the, the prune option needs to be enabled as well, okay? Um, so to help us troubleshoot this, there are a couple of places in the logs you can look. In Argo CD server, there is a line deleted application, and this indicates that the user has initiated app deletion. Now, this says manually. It could be, it could be done actually through Git or, or through some other mechanism. Um, logs for Argo CD application controller uh, includes one that says deleting resources, and this means there's been a request to delete an application in Kubernetes, and the Argo CD controller is now deleting the child resources. 
Uh, objects remaining for deletion will show the progress and deleting applications resources with string percent propagation policy. This means there was a request to delete the application in Kubernetes and it shows the propagation policy. And there are a number of different propagation policies you can pick. Um, let, let's look at, let's look at a, an example. So let's say I want to rename an application. Uh, you, anybody ever try to rename an application in Argo CD? And that went poorly. Yes, yes, that, that's right, it went poorly. Uh, there is no such thing as renaming an application in uh, Argo CD. It's like renaming any, any resource inside of Kubernetes. You can't rename them. Um, what will happen is that if you edit the application custom resource, the, the application spec, and change the name and push it and patch it, it will actually delete the old application, which will then automatically, if the finalizers are set, will automatically, and, and prune is, is uh, you know, potentially enabled, depending on the scenario, it will then actually delete all of those child resources, right? So the way that you actually do, you can actually solve this is it's possible in Argo CD to have two applications managing the same resources. Under normal operation, we don't, you, we generally don't recommend doing that. It's like, why, why would you do that? Well, the reason you would do it is because you wanted to migrate those resources to a different application's stewardship. So the way you do that is first you disable automated sync. Now you can do that by editing the application itself or you can introduce a sync window, which is my preferred method to do it. Um, and then once you've done that, you create a new application that points at the same resources, sync the new application, and this will change the owner reference I'm using, that, I'm using the term owner reference uh, incorrectly. Not, not the Kubernetes owner reference, but the, um, like the tracking, it will update the tracking annotation method if you're using label or annotation or whatever method tracking, resource tracking method you're using in Argo CD. By default, I think it's, I think it's uh, li label. Um, it'll update that label so they're no longer owned by that old application and so you can now safely delete the old application but I would select the non-cascade option, right? Um, so it's not gonna try to clean up anything else. Uh, application sets work the same. Renaming an application set will also delete the application set, except remember what we said earlier? Application sets by default set finalizers. So if you delete an application set, you will automatically delete all of its child applications and all of their resources. Because remember, the applications are owned by the owner reference, and the finalizers are set on all of the, the resources under the application by default. Um, we do have documentation that you can follow more directly on the, the CodeFresh site um, for how to rename application sets safely. It's essentially the same pattern that I just outlined um, with a few extra steps. Um, let's look at another scenario. Upgrading or moving Argo CD. So I mentioned earlier you're in the process of upgrading uh, Argo CD and something gets stuck, so you delete some things, and then suddenly not only is Argo CD gone, but all your applications and all their resources are gone. Holy crap, what just happened? Um, so remember this as in a very important rule. Don't delete, recreate, or force sync CRDs. Why? Well, this is a Kubernetes feature. If you have a CRD, which applications are, and application sets are, and if you delete that, that, that CRD, Kubernetes will automatically delete all the custom resources for that CRD. So that means all your applications now get deleted, and if they're marked for deletion and the finalizers are set, then that means all their resources get deleted too. Right, so now you have downtime. Um, now, I, I mentioned don't use force. Force is, is, is kind of an edge case here. The way that force works is it is basically the exact same as kubectl apply dash dash force. And what it will do is it will try to patch and update a resource five times. And if it fails, it will then delete and recreate it. So if you had a scenario where your CRD was being upgraded and it caused some kind of conflict that Kubernetes didn't like, it didn't want to patch that resource, uh, eventually it will delete the CRD, triggering mass deletion of all the things uh, before recreating the CRD and then you go into potentially a new sync process. But the, the more scary thing potentially, um, well actually we'll talk about finalizers in a second. 
Uh, so the next thing is, let's say we're upgrading, oh yeah, so we're upgrading or moving Argo CD. So the way that you would do this uh, safely would be, again, two applications can manage the same resource. Actually, two different Argo instances can manage the same resource. So you can actually create a whole new Argo CD instance, potentially on a different cluster, and, uh, and then you can then follow the same process. You disable automated sync, again, either a sync window or updating your applications to, to remove automated sync. Uh, and then you create the new applications pointing at the same resources. You sync from the new applications and it changes all of the annotation tracking to be the new application, new Argo CD. And then you can safely delete the old apps non-cascading and you can delete the old Argo CD safely. So that would be the process for doing that. Um, let's talk about how to handle the finalizers for a second. So remember, uh, resources will be deleted if a finalizer remo is removed and the deletion timestamp is set. So these are cascading, right? So if you delete uh, an application that has set finalizers for its resources, then the Argo CD controller will update all of those child resources to add the deletion timestamp. At which point, once the finalizer is removed, Kubernetes will actually do the deletion. So um, if you have situations where, uh, for example, we were talking about um, if you deleted the controller that's responsible for some finalizers, uh, that's now gonna be stuck in deletion, right? So you could have a scenario where you were, you were upgrading Argo CD and you deleted some components and the some components would then be stuck in deletion because they could not complete the deletion that Argo CD was trying to accomplish because Argo CD's controller is no longer running, right? Does that make sense? I see nods. People get it. Okay, good. I, it didn't make sense to me, but afterwards, come explain it back to me and it'll, it'll be clear. Okay. Um, the other issue is if an application is deleted with cascade, without an orphan policy set. So let's talk about an orphan policy uh, shortly. So um, let's talk about it, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can actually also ignore prune on applications by editing the prune propagation policy and setting it to orphan. The other options are foreground and background, and the default is, is foreground. Um, so uh, if you want to ignore prune, uh, if, if you want to, to deal with this, you change your application propagation policy to orphan, and that means that when the application is deleted, its resources will be left in place. Uh, so if you're trying to protect them, that's the way to do it. Then you can edit the application, remove the finalizers, and then you can delete the application non-cascading or migrate safely, depending on which, which direction you're going. Um, let's talk about application sets again. So this was a feature, uh, 17062, that was created where people were having issues where application sets would generate tons of applications. Let's say you're using like a list generator, right? And it's generating a bunch of applications and one of those applications fails to generate properly. Uh, this feature made it so that Argo CD's, uh, the application controller would actually just ignore that error and continue to generate applications. Now it's really useful if you've, got, if you've got a very large application set and there's a resource that's not rendering properly, it's blocking you from updating everything else. So it makes sense that you would want to ignore that change potentially. But let's imagine another scenario. Let's say that the reason that that error is being caused is because you can't reach Git. Now, instead of it being one application among 2,000 that has failed to render, it's 2,000 applications that fail to render. What happens when they all render back empty? Well, they all get deleted. And the finalizers are set automatically on applications created by application sets, which means all their resources get deleted. So if Git goes down with this feature in place, it means that all your stuff gets deleted. It's not a great feature. Uh, so we actually did revert it, and uh, this patch went out back in uh, late March. But this was a situation where um, 
where there was, you know, well-meaning thinking like, hey, I want to have more resiliency. I don't want to be blocking changes actually led to uh, a number of people actually having resources getting deleted um, in an unexpected way. Uh, and this, this could happen for any reason that a, a, a generator fa fail, fail, right? So a Git generator fails to reach the Git server. Uh, maybe the application set, you know, is malformed in some way. Maybe the Kubernetes API is taking too long to respond to the cluster generator, whatever. Um, that could cause a potential wipeout of applications generated by application sets. So uh, one, of the, uh, one of the features that you can use is the sync policy preserve resources on deletion. And um, th this, this is good and bad in different scenarios. So let's say I was using a pull request generator. Luke can tell you all about those. We gave a talk on that uh, with the New York Times using pull request generators at the last ArgoCon. Um, if you're using that feature and you use preserve resources on deletion, pull request is closed automatically deletes the applications and everything just sits on the cluster, right? So you, would, you probably wouldn't want to have the pull request generator uh, preserving resources on deletion. But if you're using like application sets for bootstrapping purposes or things like that, then um, you, and you know that these resources like, hey, if I'm going to prune here, I'm going to do it manually because these are really critical resources then uh, this would be a way to make sure that those resources are going to be stuck and sitting there and you're just going to have to deal with them afterwards. Now they're going to be orphaned, but they won't be deleted and you won't have downtime. So that's, that's, an, that's an option. Um, we do also cover how to use this uh, sync policy in the level three certification for CodeFresh, which just came out this week. So uh, it's now, now launched and available. Um, uh, another scenario, sync windows help with prune operations, but not delete. Um, sync windows are awesome, and actually I think they're one of the most underutilized features in Argo CD. You, why do I need to sync in the middle of the night? Right? Like, think about it for a second. If I needed to sync in the middle of the night, I'm probably doing it manually. If there's a surprise sync in the middle of the night, am I happy about it? Probably not. Um, now, that depends on your organization, obviously, so tune accordingly. But most people that should be using sync windows probably aren't. Um, if somebody does a sync, if there's an automated sync that happens and prune is enabled, uh, well, a sync window will prevent that sync from happening in the first place. But what about if I delete an application? Deletion is not synchronization, and so it's not applied to, it doesn't apply to uh, sync windows. So if I delete an application in like an app of apps, I can, pr if, if the parent app is prevented from updating that child app, then that's, that's okay, it won't, it won't delete that, that resource. But if that parent app is able to sync, that application would be deleted and everything within what else would be deleted. But if a user went in and manually deleted something, um, then of course the sync window also doesn't apply uh, uh, if I have, actually, I'm trying to think. If I have manual sync uh, disallowed, maybe maybe it's maybe it's not allowed. I can't remember now. Uh, blame Pasha. Um, so that's it. Uh, uh, we covered a whole lot of scenarios. Uh, hopefully, I, I gave you some solutions and gave you some things to think about, so you can make sure to keep your resources safe. Uh, you're going to be able to find me this week at either the Argo booth, the Octopus booth. You can find me on Twitter at Today Was Awesome. I've been doing a contest to see who can take a picture of my Argo Forerunner. If anybody saw that Forerunner with the Argo on it, the Kubernetes on it. That, so if, uh, if you want to win a mug, you got to find, find it and take a picture and tag me on it. Um, and then you can read Pasha's blog post here on codefresh.io. Thank you very much.